Okay, so really quick, we want us. So let's um, work on uh, the basic code we're going to need to create this artwork. Um, so we're going to create some subtractive geometry, and we're going to whittle it into the, uh, into the tabletop, basically. Uh, so to do that, uh, the first thing we want to do is we're going to have to go create a... Um, we're going to have to create a project for the artwork. So we're going to keep this artwork project separate from the tabletop design, and we're going to just include it. So this is our models folder, and then we have another thing called the A folder, which is actually for art. And I don't even know what F is. Oh, fonts? Yeah. So we're just going to... Um, I'm going to say... Um, okay, I can't spell caffeine, I can't, and molecule I can kind of spell, so we're gonna just going to abbreviate as caffeine molecule, like this, so I don't have to worry about misspelling it. And then in here, we're just going to go new uh, text document, and uh, we're just going to call it um, 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 caffeine molecule mural. Or we're going to just call it cam for. I'm going to do this cmm.scad. And then in here, we're going to say, um, caffeine molecule mural, right? So then in here, let's just double click this really quick. And we need to make the function in such a way that, um, it, um, it needs to be different than the way we do our... <coughs> Our other designs so it needs to be injected with a variable that determines the what the size of an inch is okay or um yeah it's i think it's gonna be easier if it's in terms of inches all right so cmm caffeine molecule mural i mean maybe it should be a lo called logo but then here we're gonna say module and we're gonna go CMM um, mural, CMM mural, or um, <coughs> uh, CMM main, right? <coughs> Caffeine molecule mural main, and we need some variables like uh, um, one inch. Um, Uh, imperial units inch in terms of native units. So we're, we're going to have an imperial un, uh, inch in terms of native units. And then what we're going to have is um, uh, we want to know how many inches how many inches should the mural be, right? So um we're going to say 
Um, we're going to try to make this kind of square, right? So we're going to say... Um, uh, Um, okay, so this is, you know, size of image, or size of mural, right? So, right, so, boop, 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 boop. the, <sighs> and also, what's up with this? I'm gonna go up here for a second. Yeah. Okay. There we go. That's a little bit better. So, um, the mural needs to stretch over whatever sized surface we give it. So we need to provide a scale factor for the number of native slash internal units in an inch, then we need to specify the target render size for the mural, right? So imps c2 nat number of native units in an inch, and then mural imp san, mural <clears throat> target size to render the mural, right? So we need these two variables. Uh, we need to provide that level of flexibility for this. So most of the artwork files need this kind of flexibility. Okay, <clears throat> so once we have that, um, we got to figure out what to do next. So um, I think that if we look at if we look at the um, if we look at our imgur, we saved something. So www.imgur.com, and I believe all the molecules have like hexagonal. If you look at the molecules, they have hexagonal. Um, they're built on hexagons, right? Like if we look at this kind of thing here. Or actually, not hexagon. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we got like, these n gons, and sometimes there's a double bond. Sometimes there's double bonds, and sometimes there are single bonds, right? Um, so we want something to. We want a way to render this kind of thing, right? So um, <clears throat> I'm thinking that to design this. We need to make some type of helper function that um, creates n-gons, right? To create some n-gons that um, n-gons with probably uh, see how this has like circles, lines, circles, lines. So we want to be able to render n-gons with um, different vertices styles and different line styles, and n-gons with different number of sides. Um, and the line styles, maybe, we may have double bonds in some places, we may have single bonds in other places. So, we need to, uh, um, so this could be, if we were trying to render this, if we go like, this double bond is shared between both of these shapes, so we would have to make it so <clears throat> the geometry just kind of lines up nicely, I think. Um, I don't know, we'll polish it as we go, I think. But the first thing we need is just to make n-gons that... Um, have kind of like, I think, like rounded lines and spaces, right? Um, 
and then from there we can kind of work on other things. So if we make something that can kind of render something like this, I think, and then we let's try to render something like this on the right first, and then we can polish it up to give it like little labels, right? Because I actually want a hybrid. I want a hybrid of this mixed with this is what I'm going for with the logo. And then we want to put like caffeine, right? We want to make it obvious that this is caffeine. So people are like, oh, that's actually cool, right? Oh, I like drugs. I identify with drugs, but I didn't know that was caffeine. So we have to label it as caffeine as well. Um, so that that's the goal. So um, we should probably make something like um, module CMM and gone. Uh, Um, I'm going to call it Anygon because I'm going to call it Chemgon. I don't know. Because Ngon is kind of hard to spell. Or it's hard to do camel case with. Camel case is a disaster sometimes. So we're going to call it like Chemgon. And just, uh, we'll make a note here that, um, uh, render, um, stylized, uh, polygon, uh, polygon and gone, right? We're gonna, um, render a stylized and gone here, right? And so what, what do we need here? Well, we need the number of sides, so, uh, num sides, number of sides, um, and we also need... There's other variables we're eventually going to need, but let's think about the minimum viable product in order to just get a just get an end gun working, and then we'll worry about the other kind of details later, right? So uh, we need the number of sides, and then we also need um, <clears throat> the uh, we need like either a circum radius or a, we need a circumscribed radius or we need. Um, in inscribe radius so i think it's easier to do it in terms of like a uh <clears throat> the easiest way is just to have the points on the circle uh, which makes a circumscribed uh, circle around the polygon um, so i think that would be easiest so yeah so let's create a circum circle um Okay, um, circum circle radius. So we have a circum circle radius. Okay. Um, in inches. Okay, we'll have a circum circle radius in inches. And then we're also going to need. Um, let's try to put, since this is inches, let's put this first. So radius. <clears throat> and then we need. Um, 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 uh, imperial inch as native units. So this is, I don't know, I just have a thing for making everything aligned up nicely, so... Um, let's, um, if we're going to do that, though, we want the same variable name everywhere. So this thing, and then this is mural imperial span. So we're just going to call this imperial span, I think, right? Uh, and then over here we can say, if we want to keep this alias, we, in our, like, little notes here, we can keep that and say that, you know, these are the two different ways we were thinking of calling this variable, right? So we're thinking of calling the variable this, or this, or this, or this, right? So these two things are the same variable, right? Um, these two things are the same variable. Uh, number of native units in, let's just get to remove an so that it kind of fits. 
And this right here, we'll put that there. And imperial circum radius, circum circle radius, uh, number of sides. Okay. So that's the very basics in order to get this working. And we want to call this from here. And if we look at the, the shape here, um, we need a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We need a 6 gon and a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 gon. So we need a hexagon and a pentagram, right? Really? Hexagon and a pentagram? Those do seem like... Yeah, so... We're going to need a hexagon and a pentagram, so we're going to do impnat, and the radius here, I honestly don't know what the radius needs to be. Um, I'm thinking that each panel is around like 5 inches, so um, maybe we want to do like 8 inches, right, 8 inches, um, and then the number of sides is... Um, six, right? So, um, so maybe we want to just say, hey, this is, um, Eight inch radius uh, diameter. I'm thinking of eight inch diameter. So let's divide this by two. Eight inch diameter, and um, it's a hexagon. All right, eight inch diameter, and it's a hexagon. So. Let's see, what is today? Today the third. Today is the fourth. Okay, so we got this. We're going to call it. And then we got to do our work over here. Um, so how are we going to make this polygon? Well, um, we have to figure out... Um, if the... Uh, what is the line length for each side of a polygon? So, line length of polygon. Length of polygon. Side length of polygon. Uh, polygon length. Polygon side formula. So we need a formula. Um... So this will give us, um, so this formula there is, um, That's a good formula, but it's not, uh, it's for generating a polygon, right? So, so we're going to say, uh, 
Uh, try... Okay, so we're gonna put this all on one line here, right? So this is the stuff we want. And uh, this GLSL, we already have a thing for the GLSL. So uh, PGF GLSL, PGF GLSL. And it's this thing. So edit file. And then... Um, Uh, to do. So we gotta figure out what this is. So, uh, one way we could do it is we could partially generate two vertices of a polygon, and then we could just do the distance formula on them, and that would work. But I feel like there is a more simplistic formula. So, let's go kind of find that and see if we can find that and then we're just going to save our work and get going to the shop because it's almost it's almost 6 30 but i just wanted to get some stuff kind of underway here so polygon uh n-gon side length formula right so it's an n-gon side length formula is what we want um so n-gon formula n-gon side length formula n gone side length formula formula um Okay. So I got some note. Uh, N-gon side length formula. So it looks like the area formula might actually solve what that is. Uh, let's look at this. Um, find the area of a regular polygon. Number of sides, measure of one side S, apodem, and area. Um, that's nice, but we're, we're just trying to find the length of each one of these. Um... Let's go on this thing called Facebook, because I have friends on Facebook who might know this. Um, given the radius and yeah, number of sides, sides, is there a formula? For the length of each line segment that creates the n-gon slash polygon. Uh, I could just generate uh, two 
purchases of the Ngon and use the distance formula, but I suspect there is a more elegant uh, formula than that. Right, so than that. Yeah, so I could just use the distance formula and like generate two vertices, take the distance formula, be done with it. But I'm pretty sure there's a more elegant formula for that. Now, if we want to completely geometrically solve it like that, um, then we can do that, but uh, there should be a better way. So um, I want to figure that out. Okay. Okay, anyways, um, yeah, there should be a formula for this. I don't know, um, formula for, um, edge length of polygon, maybe like that. Uh, formula for edge length of polygon. Edge length of polygon. Sides of polygon, math, open reference. Um, okay. The sides of a regular polygon are the line segments that make it up. Try this adjust the regular polygon by dragging the orange dot and alter the number of sides. The length of the sides will change. Okay, so this is actually the um, the formula I want. So I'm going to put this in my notes. Um, side length given the apotem in radius. So the in radius... Um, yeah, the in radius... It's the in radius because we're going to have a circumcircle around it, right? Um, let's go look at APO to make sure that we understand what that is. APOTUM. And if we look at the... Uh, so here's the radius, here's the APOTUM. Okay, so it's the, it's the inscribed circle. Okay. So we have to, we have to go from the radius to the APOTUM. Um, okay. So, side link in the apotem. We actually want the circumradius, right? If you know the radius distance from the center to distance from the center to a vertex, right? So that's what we want, the circumradius. Um side equals 2 times the radius. 2 radius 
uh, times the sine 180 over n. Um, uh, sin is a sine function calculated in degrees. Okay, cool. Um, now the thing is, is I don't actually remember if SCAD uses uh, degrees or radians. Um, so we might want to make a note of that. Uh, does SCAD use degrees or radians? I'm going to guess that SCAD uses degrees. Rad, but I don't know. So rad deg scad rad deg scad rad deg scad. So I don't know if that's true. Let's go look that up for a second. So uh, does scad use radians or degrees? Uh, actually, let's do this. Um, cos open s scad, right? So if we see, uh, cos. Let's look at cos for a second. Let's just look at one of the formulas: mathematical cosine function of degrees. Sin Okay, yeah, so it takes degrees. Like everything here kinda says, hey, this cosine function uh uses degrees, so uh open SCAD trig functions use degrees. Okay, so knowing that, uh, that's just important for when we're looking at these formulas. So um, we see that sin is the sine function calculated in degrees. So uh, this formula, if we wanted, if we wanted this formula in terms of radians, then um, it would be uh, pi, right? Because 180 is half of a circle, two pi in a circle, right? Um, so knowing this formula, we can. Um, put that into our notes, so it should be um, side length equals two times uh, radius times 180 divided by um, number of sides. Um, and, uh, we want the sign, we're going to call it syndeg for sign degrees, right, so that we're not confused. Um, so anyways, I'll show you what I'm typing for a second. Uh, does that look good? Yeah, it looks about good. So, <clears throat> basically, and to, to avoid confusion, side length equals sine deg of 180 divided by side numbers, um, uh, times the radius, times 2, and that is the formula. Right, so the radius, the circumradius, uh... So I'd rather, uh, let's go look at this for a second. Let's go flesh out this formula, right? So, uh, the circumradius, right? The circumradius. Um, and then 2 is the number of sides. Um, uh, 
So let's change this to Sidnum, right? Number of sides. And also, if we're going to do that, because we have Sidnum and Sid length, right? So go over here. Let's uh, make a note of this, right? So let's go, hey, uh, Sidnum, is that a thing? Number of sides. So Sidnum, how about Sidlen? Uh, so lawn for length, right, is um, lawn for length. So we know uh, physical um, physical rather than array size. So we're gonna use lawn instead of len, so we know that. Or yeah, I see why you did that. Um, so over here, uh, sid sid len. We're gonna change sid len to sid lawn. Okay, and then Sidnum. Oops. Uh, number of sides. So it seems that we decided to call it number of sides. Um, which I don't really like how that's kind of um, inverted, but yeah. Uh, Uh, number, we could do this, poly number of sides, right? Paul Nos. Uh, polygon number of sides. I'm gonna make a note of that, because I kind of like that as a variable, right? So, polygon number of sides. Alright, and we're gonna do this, right? And then um, we can just say, you know, Paul Nos. If we type that correctly, and we got to get out of here soon. So, so if we go Nos Paul, Nos Paul, or Nos Paul, then we're just gonna correct it and say backwards use Paul Nos. Okay. And if we type, um, if we ask what this means, we want to know what this means as well, right? So Paul Nos, what, do, what does Paul Nos mean? Paul Nos means. So if we do that, we're going to surround it in brackets so we know that's exactly what we queried. And polygon number of sides. Paul Nos. Okay, let's put this back over here. And yeah, so polygon number of sides. Uh, we take the circumcircle radius, uh, use the sine in degrees, and we get the side length, right? So, uh, so, right, so that's what this question is here, right? Um, so, I like this URL. Uh, now, I don't exactly know why this is the case for this formula. Um, but I've learned over the time that we don't want to always, um, at some point you have to accept certain things as givens, and, and searching all the way down for exactly why this is the case, um, it can be, you have to accept sometimes that you just don't know certain things. Like, yes, we can... Uh, we can figure out, we could do a proof and figure out why this is the case. But right now we should just accept it as fact and work at the level of abstraction that we're trying to work at rather than get sidetracked as to why is this that case, right? Because I used to, that slows you way down if you try to always 
reevaluate the core truths of everything. So, um, so unless the code just doesn't work, right, then we can reevaluate these kind of formulas and be like, hmm, maybe this isn't correct, right? But right now, all we want to do is have pattern recognition and be like, oh yeah, this formula is the side length formula for a polygon with a certain number of sides and this circum, uh, circum circle, right? Um, okay. So we need to add some more code here, but we need to just uh, commit this and, and get going to the shop. So um, it's really not much right now, right? It's really just not, um, it's not much, but it's uh, one step at a time, my friends. So we're going to, and also we got the shortcuts for this. So next time we want to look at this kind of math, we'll be in a slightly better situation. Yeah, okay, cool. So let's go uh, open containing folder and explore. Uh, we already have it. Let's go up to the utility patent, uh, git bash here, and let's uh, commit what we have. So uh, git status, git add dot, git status, git commit dash am, and mural, Um, caffeine molecule mural code in progress. Okay, git status, uh, git push, github master. Okay, so we're going to go take our thumb drive, we're going to plug it in, we're going to load what we have up into our thumb drive, and then we're just going to go off the shop and we're going to cut some more parts. We don't yet have all the three-way parts we need, so uh, we can start keep on cutting some of the larger scrap pieces we have. Um, and then once we've cut all the large scrap pieces we have, we can start to figure out how to get um, get the other pieces we need. But um, um, well, actually, we have a lot of. We're not going to worry too hard about what scrap pieces need to be cut. Um, we're going to use our latest scrap sheet, and then we'll we'll figure out from there. I'll just keep on cutting our scrap until there's no more scrap left. Um, so let's go uh, plug in our thumb drive. Let's plug in our thumb drive, and let's get out of here. Uh, today at the shop, we'll be doing more meaningful work because we have something to work on. Um, we have something to work on while we're at the shop, right? We have we have this code that we need to focus on, um, and we can just focus on we can focus on that while we're cutting pieces, right? Because sometimes at the shop, um, I don't have a compiler, so I don't have a compiler at the shop, so I can't actually do like any. Uh, C work, um, and so sometimes I'm just twiddling my thumb and messing around on Facebook. So it's nice to have something that I can start chewing on while I'm kind of uh, cutting pieces at the shop, right? Because um, then it's like you're getting double work done, right? Because the the machine is cutting parts for you, uh, and while you wait, instead of you know effing off, you like write some code and get something done, right? So get status. <clears throat> okay, and then we're gonna go to a git fetch, right? So if we do a git fetch, the git status should change here. <clears throat> and once this, once we've got this kind of upload, um, yeah, unpacking up. Whoa, that's uh, taking way longer than. Okay, there we go. Um, so now git status. If you look at this now, uh, we see uh, three commits. So we'll do a git pull. And then we want to check on our thumb drive that we have this new piece of art, right? So if we go into our thumb drive, this is our thumb drive, and we go into the art folder, we can see that uh, we have this caffeine molecule mural, right? So that's the thing we're working on. So let's close this from over here. 
and let's close this. Um, let's close this. Let's close that. Uh, so we're ready to get out of here. We're ready to get out of here. Um, this was just kind of a quick little video um, to get a little bit of stuff done, get stuff ready for going to the shop, right? Only 45 minutes. There wasn't much time to do anything do much. There wasn't really much time to do much of anything useful, but I think that, um, you know, getting started, started can be the hardest part. So I believe that um, we've put ourselves in a good position to get started writing this code to figure out what the heck this mural needs to look like. So I'm going to end the stream now, and I'm going to go to the shop, and I'll be back to work more on this stuff later. So later.